In this video, I would like to talk about the ability to forecast the progression of Parkinson's disease in an individual person with Parkinson's. My assertion is that if we can forecast an individual's progression, we can demonstrate disease modification as long as we can also forecast the effects of several changes. The advantage of forecasting model over a clinical trial is that it allows one to measure the effect of multiple variables at the same time. It also allows us to categorize several responder types so that we can customize treatment. Forecasting starts with a given set of conditions and predicts what those conditions will be in a very small step in time. The more steps that are taken, the more uncertain we are of the forecast. This can be seen in hurricane forecasts as each time increment step is taken the path that the center of the storm might take is broadened. We also know that different forecasting models have different rules for calculating the next step and yield similar, but not the same results. Over time, given more data and other improvements, models can improve. The supposed gold standard of proving disease modification is perhaps the delayed start double-blind clinical trial. In this scenario, one group is started on a placebo, the other group is started on the drug treatment. The assumption is that the drugs have an effect on symptoms that is represented by the initial downward inflection. The effect on progression will be seen in the slope following the initial inflection. A group that starts later in the progression of Parkinson's disease may experience a similar improvement in symptoms. However, to prove modification, the slopes must not allow the convergence of the two groups. Unfortunately for Teva, the Adagio study did not work out as they had hoped. The low dose demonstrated statistically valid disease modification, but a higher dose did not demonstrate disease modification. Forecasting requires a gestalt switch for the medical community. There's no placebo, there's no double blind. This may seem like sacrilege, however, I think the power and improvement over the clinical trial in identifying the controlling variables is a game changer. Also, one can add forecasting to a traditional clinical trial and have the best of both worlds. As specialists in Parkinson's, you have seen patients that worsen at various rates. You suspect that there are types of Parkinson's and that there could be events such as anesthesia or taking drugs that may worsen the condition rapidly. You know that different patients are exposed to different levels of stress, different kinds of toxins, have different microbial flora in their guts, have different genes are on different medications, have different exercise regimes, and different diets. You might be curious to know how such complex combinations can all be studied and put into the forecast at once. The answer comes from a few breakthrough technologies such as dimensional data structures, logistic regression, Monte Carlo techniques, OLAP databases, to name a few. OLAP stands for Online Analytical Processing. A good forecast requires expertise in all these tools as well as an understanding of Parkinson's disease at a clinical and also a molecular level. When a doctor does evaluations using standard scoring tools such as the UPDRS, they are creating a periodic snapshot. Forecasting says that for every measurement within the UPDRS, we can predict the value of the measurement in the next evaluation based on past evaluations given a set of rules or algorithm for each predicted value. If we use the predicted evaluation, we can apply rules to continue to make forecasts based on the forecasts. What are the steps in building a model of Parkinson's disease progression? First, you must collect data over time, build a database using periodic snapshots, to this, we will add temporal based derived variables such as longevity, how many months since your first Parkinson's disease symptoms or since diagnosis, how many months old are you at the time of the snapshot, etc., how many months have you been on a drug. Some could be based on recency. How long ago did one start or stop a drug? How long has it been since you exercised? How long has it been since you had general anesthesia? There are many other types of uh, temporal variables. The next step is to determine the importance of variables in being able to predict the future values. 
Choosing the right variables and segmenting the population into groups are more important than the tools used to do the forecasting. Build a few forecasting models using different algorithms. This means you are making a guess by putting values into future snapshots. Short-term forecasts might add three months of snapshots. Long-term forecasts might add 10 years of snapshots. Test the model's ability to forecast accurately. Build challenger models to see if you can do better than the current champion. Use the models to study and predict disease modification.